Alright, let's reassemble this puppy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble the takedown button. Alright, for reassembling this, the slope on the front of the receiver and the slope on the takedown button need to match as you put those together. So, take the takedown spring and the takedown button, push them in. If you look in this hole, you will see as you push this, you'll see this tab go past that hole. Once that tab is past that hole, that's when you want to insert your roll pin. Now as that gets close to the bottom, flip it over and use nylon. Keep in mind the finish on your gun. Just tap it until it's flush. And there is your takedown pin installed. Alright, the next thing I'm going to replace is the sear spring. When you put the sear spring in the gun, it needs to go in the gun facing like that. So that this little gooseneck, if you look at it so that it looks like a little bird, the head of the bird faces up and towards the front of the gun or towards the trigger. The tail of the bird faces back towards the tail of the gun. The easiest way to do that is with a pair of needle nose pliers or hemostats to hold on to either the tail or the head. Get the pin started. Once you get it just barely started, slip this inside to line it up on that pin and then finish driving the pin through. Your sear spring pin goes in this tiny little hole that's between these two holes in place or your sear spring pin in place and just push it until it seats if you need to tap it a couple of times what you want to do is you want to get it so that it is just barely protruding through like that right there now, grab this with a pair of hemostats or needle nose pliers or something. Slide it in there until it is lined up with that pin. And once you have it lined up with that pin, finish tapping that pin through the spring. Get the spring in the position that you want it. Tap that pin through. Same thing, I'm going to keep them more in the finish as it gets close. Flip it over to your plastic or nylon side. Tap it until it's flush. And release your spring. And there is your properly installed, installed sear spring. Now comes one of the two tricky parts, and that's replacing the sear. The sear goes in from the top of the gun, but the sear spring right here needs to be pushed backwards so that the sear is in front of that spring with that spring putting forward tension on the sear. You kind of have to do all of that at the same time. For positioning of the sear, the tab on the side of the sear fits into the cutout on the side of the frame. So the curved tail on the sear points down towards the bottom of the gun and it curves forward mimicking the shape of the trigger is an easy way to remember it. And then the sear pin, remember has that C-clamp. So there's two sides, one that's just a standard hole, and the other side is a hole with a depression and machined around it. That depression is where that C-clamp fits. So there's only one way to put this in. Okay, get that sear pin just resting in there so that it's easily accessible so you can quickly shove it through. That sear spring needs to be rotated out of the way. It needs to be pushed backwards towards the back of the gun, rotated out of the way. While you drop the sear in front of it. Once you have everything lined up, drop the sear in front of it. And here's when a alignment pin comes in really handy. 
a very small pin just to grab the hole in the sear. Once you have the holes lined up, you can tap that sear pin in. Off. Just make sure it's seated. And there's your sear with your sear spring. Now, to ensure that that's seated properly, if you look in there, you will see the sear. Bottom of the sear is in front of the sear spring. There's the sear spring, there's the bottom of the sear. Now, if you have the adjustable sear and sear spring, if you look inside there, you will see the tail of your sear spring right there. Those two little tabs right there are the tail of your sear spring. The fork on that piece from your adjustable sear wraps around those. So insert it in this hole in the back of the gun, making sure that those forks point up, that fork opening points up and down so that it will wrap around the tail of that sear spring. Then take that second piece, insert it into the back of the gun, and screw it in. When they make contact, you'll know because it'll stop. If you keep rotating that, you'll hear a click. That's how you know that all those pieces are lined up. And then each click is one step tighter on that sear spring, which is one step lighter on the trigger pull. If you look inside there, you will see the tail of that sear spring is being grabbed by the fork on that post and that the tighter I make it the further forward it pushes that spring. Now comes the second tricky part and probably the trickiest part and that is replacement of the hammer. Basically five pieces. You've got the hammer, the hammer strut, the mainspring, this washing more, and then the hammer strut cross pin. Now the hammer, cross, cro hammer strut cross pin has a large hole and a small hole. It goes in this hole on the receiver and the large hole faces up because that spring and hammer strut, the mainspring and hammer strut fit into that hole. Also you will notice if you look at the cross strut that hole is closer to one side than the other. Where it fits into the receiver, that hole will not be centered. It'll be off to one side or the other. The small end of the strut is on the side with this cutout. So put the big end in first so that it sets in that cutout. To double check that you had that in properly, that hole should be centered in your view. If you put that in the wrong way, it'll be off-centered inside that view. It won't line up. Make sure that cross strut is in there with the large hole facing up. Take your hammer strut with the hammer strut spring and place them down inside the top of the gun, forward of the sear, and put them inside the hole on that cross strut. If everything is in there properly, once that spring is seated inside the hole in that cross strut, that cross strut should set flush in the frame. Just like that. If it's sticking out a little bit on one side or the other, then you've got it in backwards. Okay, this is about the time that people start to cuss. If you look at the top of the hammer strut, you'll see a little notch on there. That notch goes around that post that's inside the hammer. It's a pin that goes through it there. The cutouts in the hammer go down and back towards the back of the gun. So the hammer will sit in there like this. To get it in there though, you need to tip those down so that they're facing almost down 
and put the hammer in there so that that cutout on the strut is actually engaging that pin inside the hammer. This is where it gets really tricky because what you need to do is you need to push down on the hammer against that spring far enough to get the curved portion of the hammer to clear the top of the frame to fit down inside the receiver. After you get it down inside the receiver then you need to tip it so that the hole here lines up with the hole here and then keep it in that position long enough to get a the hammer pin in there. This is one of those times that I recommend using a drift punch as a guide. That hammer tipped back, press it until it clears and rotate it forward until you get those holes to line up. There. Just get the holes in the line, drive your punch through there and I like to go from the right to the left doesn't really matter though and then use that as a guide to tap your hammer pin in place so once you get it through just tap it a couple times to get it back flush put your hammer pin in place and then using that pin using that pin driver as a guide that they're both in there just tap the hammer pin in and let the hammer pin drive the pin punch out now once that's in place the right hand side of the gun that needs to be flush so that the left hand side of the gun that sticks up hold your sear bar and your safety in place. 